and welcome back to You Can Do Anything You Put Your Mind To, the podcast where I am Margaret, your host. It is so funny because as I've been editing the previous podcast episodes in the last three, I've said that the title of the podcast is You're Awesome and You Can Do Anything You Put Your Mind To, but that is not the title of the podcast. It's just You Can Do Anything You Put Your Mind To. Blah, 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 blah. I can't even talk. It's just You Can Do Anything You Put Your Mind To. I don't know why I feel like it is so much longer than that and like I need to say so much more than that, but here we are in episode five. So just by me being here, it means that this podcast is a thing. Loki, I've already announced it to my Instagram. I've already said it a couple of different places. People are excited. They are really excited for this podcast to happen and I'm excited too, but I don't know that you guys realize how much rambling this is really just going to be for me. Well, I am super excited about it. it you know, I'm gonna reiterate again, it's not going to be just like a health and fitness and Pilates podcast because although I could talk about that forever, I don't know that I necessarily want to. I have a lot of other things to say. I have other, I, I, I don't know, I have other just important ideas that I think are helpful for many people to hear. People that are, you know, in their late 20s, going into their 30s, people that are figuring out their career, people that are working online and, and trying to make their own business. I feel like I have a lot of different experiences that I can share my wisdom and share my thoughts and, and feelings and all of that. And we are in kind of a, a new-ish setup today. I finally got my quarter shelf set up with my thousand subscriber plaque or hundred thousand subscriber plaque set up. I'm very excited about that. We've got our own little corner in the home studio, which is really fun and I'm excited about it. And I am going to be really honest. I don't even have a plan for this episode. My goal is just to get her done and to just talk for a little bit, talk with you guys, maybe give you guys some updates and just kind of see where it goes. Again, I'll say the difficult thing about recording a podcast and not really telling anybody about it is that I don't have the feedback yet from you guys. So I'm really excited for you guys to finally see these podcast episodes and uh, like just talk to me in the comments. And I'm excited to see what you guys think. I'm excited to see, you know, maybe suggestions, what you guys want to hear about. Because as I've said in the previous episodes, the most difficult thing for me with structuring a podcast episode is just structuring it at all. But it's really like making a plan and making an outline that is proving to be really difficult for me. So I think with just a little bit of feedback from you guys, it'll give me um, a better sense of direction because I don't necessarily think I want this to be like an interview show. Like I don't want to structure it like that because I... I don't know my you know my channel is is me talking to you guys and that's what I want it to be I think sometimes maybe we'll have some interviews we might have some special guests I've already kind of you know talked to Tyler about maybe maybe being a special guest on the podcast every once in a blue moon and he's on board with it so we may have some guests sometimes but it's not really gonna be like an interview podcast it's just gonna be like a sit down chat with me your friend Margaret your friend and Pilates instructor Margaret so Without further ado, let's jump right into the episode. This already feels like a chaotic energy to enter an episode with, but we are just, we're just going to enter it and that's how it's going to go. So let's get into um, questions. And I also think as I was editing the last podcast episode, I know, I know I'm going off on a tangent, but just bear with me for a second. I think with every episode, I might need to come up with new questions to start off with because I almost feel like in the in the five episodes that we've done so far, I feel like these questions get a little bit redundant or maybe I just, am, I haven't opened up my mind to be able to answer these questions creatively, but I think maybe I need to pull some new questions so that we can get uh, a different vibe going on. And I don't know, we'll, we'll see. But anyway, let's jump into this. So I'm filming this podcast episode at the end of August. So just so that you guys know where we're at, I don't think you guys are going to see this until maybe the first week week in October, which just is crazy. To, it's just crazy. <laughs> it's crazy that I've managed to keep something like so secretive and under wraps for so long because typically I can't do that. I just want to talk about everything and share everything with all of you. I am so hopeful that you guys like this and that I 
you want to see more of it, I'm really, um, I'm very hopeful that that is the kind of response that we're going to get from this. I've had a positive response from people on Instagram when I said that, you know, this is what I was going to be doing. People were positive there and I am glad about that. I think what makes me nervous sometimes with, with creating and sharing different content on my YouTube channel is that typically when I share different content or when I share vlogs or sit down videos, like I lose a big chunk of subscribers and I know like it doesn't really matter and the numbers don't really matter, but it gets in my head a little bit. So I'm hoping that this warrants a positive response. And if it doesn't, then, oh, well, oh, well, I guess, that, you know, I, I made the wrong choice, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Okay. First question. What's something new that I want to try? Mm, 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 mm. I don't know. I feel like I've been doing pretty good with the past couple of episodes, like really digging deep with these answers. Like last week we talked about, I want to try, what did I say? I think I said, I want to try uh, putting myself first and getting a little bit more comfortable, getting uncomfortable. I was going through a week where I like had to have some tough conversations. I basically had to quit my studio job so that I could, you know, ex accept this new job. And I had to talk to the studio owner and it was uncomfortable. And there have been some series of uncomfortable conversations following that or not conversations, but a series of uncomfortable situations following that. And I've had to kind of uh, muddle through that and, and navigate that, which has been kind of weird. I'll say this is kind of tangential, tangential to this, but I feel like a lot of what we go through like in our 20s and post-grad is just like navigating new situations that you've never had to navigate before. Navigating like putting yourself first in situations and figuring out what you want from any given situation, what you want from your life, from your career, from your relationship. It's figuring out a whole lot of new stuff and you're only going to get better at navigating those things by doing that and you're only going to get better at those things by you know continuing to put yourself in seemingly uncomfortable situations so something new that i want to try actually now that i've rambled on long enough that did get get my wheels turning so something new i want to try is making friends real life friends in St. Louis. I haven't yet done that yet. I feel like making friends as an adult is not something that I have really done. Like I don't really think I've made a new friend since I was in college and that was like 10 years ago. So I, I really want to try and do that, but I almost don't know how to go about it in a non cringy way or at least in a way that doesn't make me cringe. So that is something that I really, I want to try what's holding me back. Again, it's me. I'm my own worst enemy. We talk about this in every episode. Truly, I am my own worst enemy. I have taken some steps though, to be able to uh, like, almost forge friendships or get closer to like at least connecting with some people in real life. So I, I am kind of excited about that, but it's also the nerves of like, I joined this big Facebook group of like, it's like 7,000 women that are in the St. Louis area and you know, they do meetups and stuff like that. And like, ugh, it would be so easy to just go, but I haven't yet. And I think it's just me being nervous that I'm not going to fit in or that I'm going to be awkward or that like, it just won't be the right vibe and then I'll be stuck there. And you know, I, I don't know. There are so many things in my head that I think is, are stopping me from just like going and doing this new thing and meeting new people. I think it's mostly that I just like, haven't done it recently uh, or like recently enough that I feel like things will come back to me, which is so weird. It's so weird because I talk to people all day long. I am teaching all day long. I am building and, and you know nurturing relationships with people all day long in person and online. So in theory, this should come pretty easily to me, but I'm feeling a little bit of resistance and I wish that I wasn't. Like I wish I just had one friend that I could go to these things with and I can't bring my husband along with me because he is not a girl. You know, Th these events are like for literally just for women. And so I'm like, I need somebody to go with, but I, I'll, I'll say that for my new thing and what's holding me back. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. Uh, like what it is every single week, just me having my own problems. Something new that I've enjoyed this past week is filming the Taylor Swift classes. I had such a fun time putting together the Taylor Swift series um, in my virtual studio. It has been 
like joyful. It's kind of reignited almost like a, a new creative, I don't know, creative energy in me. I've really had a fun time doing it. The classes are kind of like silly. They're a little bit, they're, I don't know, they're just low stakes and they're fun. And I think I've enjoyed it because I, I really enjoy music and uh, that's something that I feel like in my everyday life, like in my job and just in what I'm doing, I don't know that I am really like able to scratch that itch um, because when I was growing up, I did so much revolving around music and theater and that has always been a big part of my life, but I feel like in adulthood, I, I lose a lot of that. So I have been really excited and really happy. I found a lot of joy in filming these Taylor Swift classes and literally all it is is me teaching Pilates with Taylor Swift underneath, but I've had to learn like a new skill of how to get, you know, get her music underneath and how to have so many things going at once while I'm filming a class. I feel like that's kind of scratch the creative itch as of lately. And uh, by the time you guys are seeing this, you can still do the Taylor Swift classes. Um, they're only available to virtual studio members. So you have to become a member of my virtual studio and you can take all of those classes. Right now it's just Midnight's Evermore, Folklore, and Lover that have classes, but they're all two part classes because I'm gonna be honest, her albums are kind of long. Could I have made hour and seven minute long classes. Yes, but I didn't think it would be super enjoyable for everybody. So I split all the albums up into two parts and I will be doing more Taylor Swift classes. So for any of you that are huge Swifties, classes are for you. And I think you would really like them. Um, I will be doing more. I will say they'll probably come in accordance with me or in, in tandem though. I don't know. New Taylor Swift classes will come out when I am probably on vacation or when I'm just taking a little bit of time off. So I don't have exact dates on when those new classes are coming, but soon-ish. We definitely will have to do a couple of classes for Red. We'll have to do 1989 when it comes out, Fearless and Speak Now, and then of course um, her debut album. We'll have to do all of those, but I have really enjoyed that this week. I think I've talked about this, or I've touched on it at least in a couple of episodes, how I'm trying to make creating content just a little bit more fun for me. And I feel like this series like really did that for me. And I'm not even necessarily creating content with those classes. Like I'm, I'm creating classes for my membership to take, but it just, I don't know, it made me excited for filming. It made me excited for what I'm doing at home. And I feel like I've been missing a lot of that. So I'm glad that I was able to find that with those classes. That is something that I've really liked. Something that I've been putting off that I need to put my mind to. You'll be happy to know that pretty much everything, eh, Almost everything that we talked about in the last episode, I did get done. I took my return to anthropology and that was a big, you know, check off the list, which was <laughs> really good. I have a bad habit of putting things off until the last possible moment. And I wish that I wasn't like that, but I just, I just am. I just am. Something that I've been putting off that I need to, or I would like to get done. We still have some furniture pieces that we need to commandeer and get into our house so that we can have things a little bit more finished in terms of decorating. I would like to get those things done. I'm kind of waiting to see if like any good Labor Day sales come up, or at least that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> but yeah, that's something that I would like to get done and, and do and, and have that done hopefully by the next episode that we film. Those are my my questions that I have answered. And like I said, with today's episode, I don't really have a firm plan. So I'm not quite sure where I wanna go with this. I have a little bit of an idea. I know last week we talked about my fitness journey and how it evolved and you know why I'm doing weightlifting and Pilates in one go. We've talked a little bit about career. We've talked a little bit about you know my journey with teaching online and social media and all of that kind of stuff. I'm almost kind of thinking today Today, I wanna to talk a little bit about, I know we've talked a little bit about jobs, but I feel like I kinda of wanna talk about like how, how you know when it's time to like leave a situation that you're in or when you know it's time to like 
start doing something new and how I have navigated situations like that. The most like uncomfortable situation ever is having to quit a job. Like it is the most uncomfortable thing ever because usually when you quit a job, you have to give two weeks. So you're giving two weeks and then you're like continuing to work for those two weeks and then you leave. And I have, let's think about all the jobs that I've had to quit in my life. Here we go. My first job was selling uh, Medicare insurance door to door. I quite literally had to knock on people's doors and sell them Medicare supplements or, you know, just help them get enrolled in Medicare. And that job was horrible, but I, like I had such a difficult time finding a job right out of college. I got my degree in public health and I thought that I wanted to go into health education. But like when you're looking at jobs, trying to get into the health education field, like they're just aren't health educator jobs. Like they just aren't out there. So this was the only job that I like was able to get. It was a hundred percent commission based. So I wasn't paid for this job for a really long time because I had to get my health and life insurance um, certification. I had, or my license, my health and life insurance license. I had to do that. Like I, uh, I had to go through this training, their sales training. It was, it was kind of a lot for a job that like didn't pay anything. So I did that job for about six months. And when I say I did it, I, you know, I kind of did it, but I did it poorly. Like I really didn't sell any any insurance effectively because I was kind of embarrassed of that job. I was embarrassed of where I was at. Like you would get heckled almost by the, I mean, these people that we're knocking on the doors of they're 65, right? They're, they're aging into Medicare. And sometimes people would be really nice and have really good questions. And like, they would let you right in the door. Like when you knock on the door, which is crazy. And looking back at like kind of unsafe, I probably shouldn't have been doing this um, by myself ever as a 22 year old woman like I really shouldn't have been doing this job and I don't know I I really don't know how I ended up here but but I was like so I don't know I just I, I didn't have any other options so this was the job that I had and it was like so upsetting because I wasn't like really successful at it. Like I didn't feel like I was successful. I didn't really, I didn't like it. I felt like I wasn't good at it. I was, I think I was upset at myself because I, I couldn't manage to like get another job until I had, this was maybe in January. Um, I took this job, I think in August of 2017. In January of 2018, like my hairstylist had a client and she was like, oh, he works for CVS. Like maybe you should talk to him and see if he can help you find a job at CVS. I was like, well, okay, I'll, I'll take it, whatever. And I got this other job at CVS. Again, not my dream job, not really what I wanted to do. It was, you know, it was a job that had consistent pay and benefits and uh, like an office. The office was r right next to where I was living. Like. It was great. So that was like my first time having to quit a job. And it was just, it was kind of easy because this was like a hundred percent commission based job. So I just went in and I was like, hi, I'm starting a new job. I'm starting in two weeks. Like this is my last day. That one I don't think was that difficult. It was an uncomfortable conversation. And again, I was 22 in an office full of men. I mean, it was adult men in this office. So like having to put my foot down and say like, I have this other opportunity that is like actually going to pay me money, I think was a little bit uncomfortable, but that was my first experience having to quit a job and start something new. When I started my job at CBS, I mean, everything was fine because it was a job and I was just happy to have a consistent paycheck because I had never really had that before. But when I quit that job to pursue teaching Pilates, it was again, an uncomfortable conversation with my manager. It also came at a time that there were some other things going on like in my life that it was just a weird time. It was really weird timing to have to quit my job. But this was like in November of 2019. And at that point, Point, I was quitting this job to go be a studio manager full time for the um, studio that I was teaching at. And I feel like any time that I, well, not any time that I've like quit a job to go teach fitness, but fitness, I feel like gets a bad rep for not being a successful career, not being a stable career. Like people kind of scoff at you when you say, oh, I'm, 
I'm a Pilates instructor. Yes, this is my full-time job. Like people don't understand that it can be a full-time job and it can be a successful career. So at this point, when I quit my job, my manager was like, well, we'll always be here. When it doesn't work out, we'll be here. Like she literally said something like that, which was crazy to me. Like I didn't feel supported. It felt uncomfortable. She also like, she also asked me not to tell anybody else that I was leaving until she had a chance to tell them, which was fine. But like, I didn't tell people I was friends with at work because my manager asked me not to say anything. So. I didn't and I like lost some friendships over that. But looking back, I'm like, they couldn't recognize that I'm a rule follower and I was just doing what I was told like, and they want to stop talking to me over that. Then that is their problem and not mine. So that was really my, whew, gosh, I've had a couple of ex experiences quitting jobs actually. <laughs> that was like quitting a full-time corporate job to go into fitness full-time. And I got just like a little bit of flack, I feel like from everybody, not only from like my manager, but from my family too, I think they were nervous because they didn't, again, they didn't really like realize that this could be a full-time career and it was going to be a full-time income. There would be money there. When I was a studio manager, I was managing two locations. It went up to three. I was teaching like 20 classes a week. So like it was really good, consistent money and the job wasn't that hard when I did that. And then, you know, I did that leading into COVID and I, I mean, I had to have multiple uncomfortable conversations that now looking back, like they were uncomfortable and you know, whatever I had to do what I had to do. Like I had to be the one to call the studio owners and be like, um, yeah, I think COVID's a thing and I don't think what I can teach right now. So find somebody to cover my classes because I'm uncomfortable. Like I've had to have those uncomfortable conversations. I had to do that again when I wasn't ready to go back into teaching in person. And I know we talked about this a little bit, probably in the first or second episode, but I, in 2020, especially I was in like such a fight or flight and like panic mode that any uncomfortable conversation just like made me, you know, made me feel like tightness in my chest. But I knew that every decision that I made was the right one. It was the right one for where I was at at any given point. Quitting a job is uncomfortable, but quitting something when you know the next opportunity that you're being given is the right opportunity, when you know it's a better opportunity for you, that makes it, I feel like, a little bit easier. And then you're just kind of handling how the other person reacts. Like for me, I've always known it's time to leave something when I start dreading going into work, when I start like thinking in my head of excuses of why I can't go and do this thing today, or I, you know, come home and the first thing I do is complain. Like I know that it's, you know, probably time to think about something new, think about why this isn't working, you know, and, and sometimes it's, it can be difficult. Like if you haven't been doing something for that long to really, know if you don't like something or if you just like don't have a firm grasp on it or you don't feel confident in the job duties yet. It can be hard to know in the early stages, but I'll give an example of where I have been teaching. It has been great, but right off of the bat, the schedule wasn't really what I wanted. It wasn't really what I had, you know, expressed that I was looking for when, when I was, you know, first, I guess, technically interviewing for the job. It was just kind of a schedule that was thrown together and I was thrown in where I was needed and I didn't really want to teach like a night classes or Saturdays, but I kind of got roped into that because I wanted to be able to teach. I wanted hours, I wanted some extra money and I was happy to jump in wherever I was needed. And that's what I did. But as I continued to do that, you know, it was more and more like, oh my God, it is so annoying that I have to go in on Saturdays Saturdays and teach. And I wish I didn't have to work on Saturdays because then we could go, you know, me and my husband could go do something on the weekend. Schedule was just kind of choppy. Like on Saturdays, I have a break in between one class and another. And it's like, well, I'm not getting paid for that break. So I'm just like kind of sitting here twiddling my thumbs for an hour. And you know, it's things like that, that the schedule wasn't perfect for me. There were other things. I'm not going to go into all of it, why it wasn't the right fit, but I knew for me, it wasn't the right fit because I wasn't like the best version of myself when I was at the studio, there were too many other factors going on, too many things going in my head that I just like, I couldn't show up in that space as the best 
Pilates instructor that I could be because there were like too many outside factors affecting like how I was planning a class, affecting what I was able to teach in a class, affecting uh, like just the, the flow of class and how things operated. It was just, I don't know. I got to a point that it was starting to be a little bit too much for me. And what was keeping me there was that I didn't have a car. So I was there for much longer than I probably would have been because I could walk there and it was easy. You know, it was easy. Why would I stop doing something or working somewhere if it was that easy to do? I knew for me, it was the right time to look for something different when I started feeling just like not excited about going into work. I think usually that's a pretty good sign that it's time to start, you know, exploring other opportunities or having conversations and figuring out what else is out there for you, but also thinking about, well, what do you really want? And for me, when I started to look into what other opportunities would be like, all these other questions kind of came into play. It was like, well, how much time do I have to dedicate? What do I want my schedule to look like? What do I want to do with my online stuff? Do I still want to be able to do the same amount of online stuff that I have been doing? Like, what is that going to look like? And can I find something that's going to be flexible enough with me to allow me to do everything or at least some of the things and create a schedule that I really you know, I really like because in the fitness world and Pilates world, my first teaching job in Phoenix was a block schedule. And if you've been with me for a really long time, you know, from my like weekly vlogs that I used to do, like I would teach an eight, nine, 10, 11 o'clock class in the morning, and then I'd be done. And in the evening I'd teach my, my six o'clock virtual class. And that is how it was. So when I came out here and that's not how the schedule was, I was kind of like, well, this, like I'm looking for this block schedule, this is what I would like. And it just wasn't really a possibility. Like we were really limited in um, what I could and couldn't do. So I started to look for opportunities that could give me the block schedule. So I could go in, go in, come out in four or five hours and do that and have kind of like a, a regular schedule um, so that I'm not like having to go around to different studios and teach an hour here and an hour there and come back to another studio and do another hour. I think I think that's the thing that really bothered me about um, teaching not in a block schedule is that like it's not really worth it to go in and teach one class like teach for one hour like it just doesn't make sense I'd rather go in and teach for three four maybe even five hours have that be my work day and then go home. Like that just makes the most sense to me. But as I continued to ask those questions of, you know, what is going to be the right fit for me? I also started to think about, well, what is going to give me more longevity in my career, more security in my career, because to be honest, the online stuff, while it is amazing, I don't know what the future is going to be of online fitness. You know, it is still kind of a risky thing. And I want to be able to have something that can continue to support me. If the online stuff fizzles out, I don't really think that it will. And I'm going to continue to do my online stuff for as long as I can, because I love it so much. And I love that I'm able to connect with so many of you and make you enjoy Pilates. Pilates and I'm happy that you're here, but you know, I, I started to think of those things like, okay, I would love to feel a little bit more secure with what I'm doing. I'd love to have a schedule that is truly something that I want, like is a schedule that really works for me, you know, and I'd love to be able to just be, be compensated a little bit more fairly. Not that I wasn't like paid fairly anywhere else, but like there are, when it comes to fitness, there are a lot of different ways that you can be paid. I've been paid in different ways. Like I've been paid a flat rate. I've been paid a commission rate. There are just, there are a lot of things that come into play. And I didn't realize that there were ways that I could have like a more full time time job that gave me benefits and security and the schedule that I wanted and gave me the ability to really um, continue to progress in my career, but also continue to make more money and make a sustainable 
income and not be an independent contractor. I had no idea that opportunities were like that. Opportunities like that were out there until I started looking and until I started asking myself those questions of, well, what do I really want in 10 years? What do I want for my career? What do I want it to look like? I think that that those questions have been some of the best things that I've asked myself in the last year, because what I've realized with working from home and working for myself is like, there is no step above where I'm at. I cannot progress further than owning my own business and being my own boss. Like that is the peak. And that didn't feel, it didn't feel sufficient for me and it didn't feel fulfilling for me. It just still kind of felt like, oh, well, I'm just a, I'm just a Pilates instructor and that's all I do. And I don't know, I've talked about this a little bit, but I, I think for me, when, when I was starting to look at kind of making a, a career shift, I was thinking to myself, like I've been meeting so much resistance with creating content and so much resistance with just like making my job enjoyable. Like I almost think it would be better to find something with a little bit more security and, you know, take up some more hours in my day so that I can take my business back into like a really high performing side hustle, like what it was when I started it. I think I, and we've talked about this again, I tried owning, like owning and operating my own business and just doing that. And it was like the most unfulfilling thing for me. I had never felt so disconnected, so lonely, so just like upset just working for myself. I think now knowing that I had a much clearer idea of what I wanted to do in my career. So if you're, I don't know if you're at a crossroads and I feel like a lot of people that watch my channel, like we're all about the same age. We're all probably, Ooh, I don't know, early twenties to maybe early forties. I'd say we've got a pretty big age range, but I think a majority of us are around my age. And I think this is such like a transitional time in our lives. Like we're going through so many things. We've experienced so many things. We're at a point that like, we really know what we like and what we don't like. And we have, the power to like ask ourselves those questions of what do we want from our career and where do we see ourselves? I think for like for myself, I've had now multiple teaching experiences that I know what works. I know what doesn't work. I know what I can do. I know what I can't do. I know that I, I thrive in situations where there's a lot of structure, where there are sales processes and all of that. Like I thrive in that kind of environment because I want to do things by the book. So if you tell me I have to do something, I am going to do it. Um, I have no problem like selling anything. I'm good at that. That's what I've been doing my whole career as a Pilates instructor. So I'm good at that. And I think for a long time, like I shied away from the sales aspect of things. Like I always said, oh, I don't want to go into sales. I don't want to go into sales. Sales is just like, bleh. it's so yucky. But I think I've realized that that's what I'm good at, really good at it. And especially in a Pilates context, I am good at helping somebody realize that Pilates can help them. I have a really strong um, personal connection to why I do Pilates and that resonates with a lot of people. And I'm, I'm good at that. And I feel like I finally found what I am good at. I say this to people all the time. Pilates is the only thing that I have felt like I've actually been good at. And I feel like my whole like, my whole life leading up to this, like I did theater because I wasn't good at sports. I wasn't amazing at theater. Like I didn't go on to pursue it in college or pursue it professionally because I wasn't that good. Like I was good, but not so good that I was going to get into a like musical theater program anywhere. Not so good that I wanted to be on Broadway. And I just didn't want to work that hard. Cause I didn't like, I wasn't at the same level that some of my peers were like, I never felt like I was good at that. When I got to college, it was like, uh, there wasn't really a major that I felt like I was really excited about or like I really wanted to do. It wasn't until I started teaching and like found this career that I really felt like I was doing what I was meant to be doing and what I was good at. Like I finally feel like I found something that I'm good at. And 
I think when we're like young in our career, it can feel really discouraging to not be in that position yet. But there is so much time to be able to figure out like what the right fit is for you in terms of your career. There's so much time to figure out what you want and what you don't want in your career. So if you're maybe at a point in your life that you're questioning a lot of like career things, if you feel like you're at a job that you're just like, Ugh, I don't know, like where is this leading? I don't want to be in HR forever. You know, if you're in that kind of a situation, it's never too late. It's never too late to make a change. And, and you can always like, you can always try something out. And if you try a new job, if you like try to get into a new field and you don't like it, you can always go back to what you were doing. There's nothing wrong with like trying a new job and hating it and quitting. There is nothing wrong with that at all. You know, you have your experience to fall back on and you are probably capable of so much more than you give yourself credit for. I always felt like when I got out of college, like I had to have it all figured out and I didn't. And I still feel like I don't, but I think I have it more figured out than I did 10 years ago. And that makes me feel a little bit better. Like I'm at a point that I like, I know I'm going to be doing Pilates until the day that I die. I don't know in what capacity I'm going to be teaching Pilates until, you know, I can't do it anymore, but I know it's what I should be doing. I know it's what I meant to be doing. I know it's what I'm good at. And I am like knowing that like puts me at peace. It's just continuing to take the opportunities and seek out the opportunities teaching Pilates that support my like overarching vision for my life. Like, I think, I think that initially like the draw of teaching Pilates, like it gives you a lot of flexibility but it also gives you a lot of structure, especially if you're working in a block schedule. Like you always know what your schedule is going to be, but it's different every single day. You're either teaching a different routine, you're seeing different one-on-one -on -one clients, you're working through different issues because people come in and people's bodies feel different every single day. So there's so much variety in what I do. And I think that's why I still like it and enjoy it. And I feel challenged, you know, every single day, every hour that I'm teaching, just it's, it's so, I don't know, it's very challenging. And I always feel like I can learn more. And I am excited because I feel like this new opportunity, this new job that I am well, when you guys see this, this new job that I'm at, but from my perspective, this new job that I'm going to be starting, I feel like it is going to be able to support me in any like continuing education that I want to do and any like career development that I want to do and any like it will be able to help me get to the places that I want to be. Because for me, I love teaching, but like I think I would also really like being in charge of a teacher training. I think I would really enjoy that. And I think I have found something that is going to give me that opportunity. So I am really excited about that. And I think as just kind of like a closing moral of the story, almost, it's never too late to figure out what you want. And it's never too late to take steps like out of a job into a new one, it's never too late to make a change, no matter how you feel, no matter if you are, you know, 50, 60 watching this and you want to start teaching Pilates or you want to start doing something different than what you have been doing your whole life. It's never too late to try something new. Um, I think we are going to wrap up this episode right here. I wanted to talk quickly about some new things that I have been trying. Firstly, I got this simple modern tumbler. Um, I like it. I like the handle. I think this is really nice. It's much easier to hold than my hydro flask. I give it a 10 out of 10. Something new that I also love that I've been wearing all summer are these free people hotshot mini dresses. I love them. But now that it's getting closer into fall, or I guess when you guys do this, it will be fall. Probably not the right uh, apparel to wear in the fall, but I do still love them. I'm still reading the same book that I was reading the last episode. Again, it's 700 pages. So I'm working through that, but I think we're gonna call it a day on the new stuff that I've been enjoying this week. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. As always, I know it's a little bit ranty, a little bit rambly, but we got there. And this is the end of episode five, which means this podcast is officially a thing. How exciting is that? Remember, you're awesome. You can do anything you put your mind to, and I'll see you back here for our next episode. Mm -hmm.